Good afternoon. In this presentation, I will talk about the soil gas emission at the island of Vulcano. The diffuse degassing of CO2 is a well-known process and can help for volcano surveillance. The soil CO2 emission is a risky volcanic process that needs to be managed by civil protection agencies based on reliable data, continuous updating. My name is Roberto and I am a researcher at INGV in Palermo. This is the outline of this presentation. In the first point, I will discuss about the motivation of the study. The gas hazard at Vulcano can be a suitable example of how to develop an efficient gas hazard warning system. The central part of the presentation focuses on the experimental method I did use for investigating the gas hazard at Vulcano, which consisted in coupling the carbon isotope determination with the CO2 flux measurements to estimate the volcanic gas output some theoretical principles and the technical details of the gas hazard warning system at Vulcano will be discussed in the last point. After that, I will give you an invitation and list the main points of my work. Earth autogassing exposes people to gas hazard. In Italy, several gas emissions were found through the Apennine change which caused some accidents in the Colle Albani, Vegliano, Mefita Danzanto and Mount Amiata just to give some examples. Actually, the volcanoes are the most active degassing zone of the Earth. Volcanic gas emission caused more than 2,000 people dead since 19. The most dangerous events occurred at Monum Volcano and Neos Crater Lake in Cameroon. This presentation concerns the volcanic gas emission at Vulcano, focusing on the gas hazard correlated with the soil CO2 flux. An effective solution for gas hazard problem involves the continuous monitoring using automatic devices deployed in the field. The early warning system for gas hazard that we have been implemented at Vulcano bases on three pillars, volcano monitoring, weather conditions and people exposure. Since the last eruption, the volcanic activity of La Fossa Volcano consists of vapor and gas emission at the crater rim, thermal water and diffuse degassing of CO2. How much and the origin of the CO2 are the critical points for correlating diffuse degassing transients with changes in the volcanic activity. In the study, we estimated the deep originated gas emissions by coupling the soil CO2 flux and carbon isotope composition measurements. The soil gases were studied using a sampling grid deployed at the base of the volcanic cone on the western side of the island. The soil CO2 flux was measured in agreement with the dynamic concentration method. To measure the CO2 flux with this method, a stainless steel probe is inserted in the soil and is open to the soil gases and the atmosphere. An IR spectrometer measures the CO2 concentration in the mixture of soil gases and air. By pumping the soil gases at constant rate, the CO2 concentration achieves dynamic stability after a few minutes, and the concentration is dependent from the CO2 flux through the empirical equation here. The data of CO2 flux have been processed through the probability plot proposed by Sinclair and three population model represents the best data classification. The average CO2 flux in the anomalous subset is two order of magnitude greater than the average values of the background. Two anomalous degassing zones were found at Palizzi and Faraglione. The isotopic measurements were performed on site by using a laser-based spectrophotometer. The soil gases were collected at a constant flux rate by a sampling probe encased in the soil. Some technical solutions were developed in the laboratory and applied in the field to measure the isotope composition in the full range of the CO2 concentration. The less certain depleted values were measured in the anomalous degassing zone and revealed the geologic origin of the CO2. The most citrus in the pretel values revealed the biologic origin of the CO2 and these values have been measured in the large part of the targeted zones. We developed a three component mixing model where the gas source are the deep originated CO2, the biogenic CO2 and the air CO2. The three component mixing model allowed partitioning the soil CO2 between biogenic and volcanic origin. 
Volcanic geysers give spectacular surface manifestations, but can pose a hazard when emission deliver gases in closed environments. The gas hazard depends on the CO2 concentration and the time of exposure. A field survey was carried out for gas hazard evaluation in Dora at Vulcano in August 2020. The measurements of the air CO2 concentration were performed indoor in 10 sites. Some bistrots, restaurants and accommodations were selected in the anomalous degassing zone of Faraglione because these sites are accessible by resident people all the year round. The list here shows the effects when people are exposed to CO2 concentration above a variety of threshold values. The most evident results of this survey were that the average CO2 concentration in the Erat volcano was uh, higher than the monthly average reference that was recorded at Mauna Loa Observatory. The measurements show that the volcanic emission have an impact on the air CO2 at Faraglione. The CO2 concentration changed over two orders of magnitude in the various sites. The air CO2 exceeds the steel values and the TVA value at one site. Specifically, this site is a private building having the floor below the ground level. People adopt empirical inefficient solutions to test the risk level when accessing this building. To face the gas hazard at Vulcano, we improved the soil CO2 flux monitoring network, able to evaluate the change of the gas hazard level through time and provide indications of short-term evolution. The new monitoring network includes four new stations that were installed at Faraglione Zone. The existing network was improved by four new stations. The stations measure the soil CO2 flux, the air CO2 concentration and the weather parameters, that is temperature, pressure and rain, because they affect both the soil gas flux and the air CO2 concentration. The early warning network bases on the monitoring stations fully designed and developed in the laboratories of ANGV for the hardware and the software components. The automatic stations allow multiple measurements, soil CO2 flux by implementing the dynamic concentration method, air CO2 concentration, temperature, pressure and relative humidity. The station includes sensor components, data logging unit for acquisition, recording and data processing and the transmission of the measurements and the power unit. The sensor listed here are uh, higher sensor, resistors and so on. The GasNet data logger for geochemical data records the measurements on the hourly basis and sends the log file on the internet to a web interface. Various ports allow connecting sensor and monitoring probe, enabling a fully customizable data logging. GasNet Data Logger has a SD card to store lots of data. Running for file hosted on the SD and EEPROM memories enables the station configuration and the scheduling of the measurements. Web server and HGNet software help remote data download on request and the rescheduling of the station. The GasNet web interface for station configuration includes the configuration setup, the station ID with connection parameters and data broadcast, data recording setup and submask for calibrating sensors and probes. The submask status interface includes on-off status, power supply status, clock settings, online test for the sensor on board. The PlotNet software allows data visualization, data analysis and data processing. PlotNet shows a time series for dynamic concentration of CO2 and RCO2, allowing the construction of panel with plots. This software allows data analysis by calculating maximum and minimum values, range of values and calculating averages. Each station of the network provides a normalized data against each own range. This allows consistent comparison among the different stations of the network. Climatic conditions can affect the soil CO2 production, soil respiration. The weather conditions can change the soil CO2 flux on a short time scale. Fast changes in atmospheric pressure modify the soil degassing because the size of the gas pressure gradient in the soil is almost the same size of the atmospheric pressure transient from good to nasty weather. 
weather affects the soil respiration, but also the stability of the boundary layer, that is the lithosphere-atmosphere interface, where soil degassing can pose threats to human health and people's activity. Therefore, the monitoring of the weather variables helps gas hazard management in volcanic zones. The effects of volcanic degassing, the consequent risk assessment and the broad perspective of the earth outgassing are among the topic of this special issue that will be published in Atmosphere. I cordially invite you to submit your researches concerning the causes of the current increase of CO2 in the atmosphere. Atmosphere is fully open access with more frequent citations. The median processing time is less than 40 days. Everyone can freely access and download the full text of all articles published in with MDPI, thus enhancing the research visibility. Let me to move on the conclusion of this video presentation. We are implementing an early warning system for gas hazard at the island of Vulcano based on three pillars here. Gas hazard management includes precise identification of the anomalous degassing zones. Thanks to new technologies for isotopic analysis, the volcanic origin of the soil degassing can be detected in the field. The approach of coupling the measurements of carbon isotope composition with soil CO2 flux enabled the identification of the anomalous degassing zones at Vulcano. The data modeling helps to quantify the volcanic CO2 accurately and improve the monitoring of the volcanic degassing. The study shows that the position of the anomalous degassing zone is stable through the time and that the gas hazard depends on the change of the volcanic degassing. The monitoring of the soil CO2 flux is crucial for gas hazard mitigation. We implemented the early warning system using four new stations at Vulcano. This technological improvement enables lots of data acquisition, automated processing and delivering analysis to the civil defense authorities for helping decisions which are based on reliable data. Vulcano has many anthropoidal zones include a variety of environments. Despite the current advances in technologies allow implementing a reliable monitoring network, the site-specific warning system is not available yet. Therefore, an effective warning system includes training for people. Knowledge and awareness of gas hazard are essential for gas hazard mitigation. This pillar includes informing people on gas hazard, training in the identification of this natural process and ability to take proper actions for reducing risk in the everyday activities. Thank you for your attention.